Hello everybody and welcome back to another primetime funk mods experience. So today we're going to be um, uh, riding along with me as I put together a client build for a full GBA package. Um, I have my soldering iron out. I have set it to about 250 degrees because one of my first big mistakes was actually uh, keeping the soldering iron at 350 degrees and frying the TP2 contact on this board. Now, <laughs> there are entire threads <laughs> out there on the internets, um, on Reddit, um, you know, forums talking through uh, Handheld Legend, Retro 6, and people who've, uh, who fried their TP2 contact because they, they couldn't get the solder to stick. Um, and so we can talk about flux, we can talk about solder and all these things, but essentially we just have to, to keep the iron not overly hot and, uh, and take our time with it. So what I'm gonna be doing first is I'm actually gonna be soldering these three wires um, to the TP2 contact, which is the select button, and then on the alternative side to the right and left triggers. Um, and that means that you're gonna be able to control the brightness by holding down select and clicking one or the other. Um, so it seems maybe to some an odd place to start, but for me, um, this board is in really mint shape and uh, I just really want to be able to put my best foot forward. So we're gonna start out with the soldering and then we're going to, uh, to put together some power on this and then test out the screen before we go ahead further with the install. Um, as any of the websites will tell you, it is a really good idea to test the screen before you get all the way through the installation process and then find out at the very last that something doesn't work or that you accidentally snapped it or that um, you've got a dead pixel. So I, uh, I doubt the screen's going to have any defects because I ordered this all directly from Handheld Legend uh, because they make quality stuff and they only put out quality parts. Um, so I have a feeling that it will be fine, but I also have some extra screens on hand just in case, because <laughs> I've done this before and the first time I did this didn't go super well. <laughs> so the whole point of this channel is to, uh, to help everybody avoid some of the, the missteps that I've experienced and some of the mistakes that I've made right out of the gate. So let's see if we can, uh, we can make that happen. So first off, um, yeah, uh, my soldering iron is set at about 250 degrees. Now, the funny thing is before we get to the board, you're gonna wanna tin the, the wire contacts. So what I tend to use for this is my little uh, micro soldering station. So I often tend to put these guys up on there and then I have a solid place to go. If you can see in there, oh yeah, you should be able to see it right in, awesome. So I'm going to be tinning that contact. And of course, as anybody would tell you, just be careful with what you're doing with the soldering iron. So the nice thing is you don't always have to even involve. So I'm actually just gonna tin the tip a little bit more here. And then I can just drag some of the solder along the ends of the wire. So that's one. And now that I've done this part, can probably just do it directly on the wire. There we go. So some nicely tinned tips. I don't have to go overboard. Just want to make sure that it's going to stick to something once you actually get it on there. Nice. Now I may still occasionally pause because it's been a little while and I might want to do some quick like material referencing myself.
but I will come back in a flash. That's the thing with pausing. Just gonna add a little bit more to the tip. Now, for any of you doing this or looking over this for the first time, I use a solder that has a flux core that often can help with uh, being able to get the solder to stick where you need it to. When you add flux to something, it's pretty much just asking that when the solder touches it, it just goops straight onto it. A goop wasn't the right word, uh, but it's pretty lightning fast that it will actually connect. Now, this is the slightly more delicate part. I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. So, now on the board, you will see the TP2 contact. Now, the key is with any sort of delicate or micro soldering, you're going to want to heat the contact and then you bring and meet the solder into it. So you can actually like leave um, a little bit of surface solder on the contact. So angle it however you need to, but essentially we're going to be heating up that contact with the tip There we go. So if you look at TP2, you can see that little little spot of solder on there. That is really all we need to be able to make our connection. So what we're going to do now is we have our pretend tips. You already watched us do that before. And we're going to some excess that I've got on here. Probably should have done that before. And there we go. So we have a solid contact to TP2. going to turn that around and then once we actually are finished with all of the soldering I am going to uh, use a little bit of captain tape to cover up those contacts because we don't want it uh, getting in touching anything else yeah see I'm gonna have to redo that a little bit not perfect there was a little bit too much excess solder there. That's more like it. I don't have any awkward little solder spikes sticking up. Okay, so that is one. And as you can see, soldering is one of the hardest things that I, I tried to get a hang of right out of the gate. Because a lot of these little tips like tinning your wires and, uh, and keeping your heat down, uh, like obviously you can see 250 degrees has been plenty. Um, these things were, uh, without having someone to just watch what I was doing and be able to, to look over my shoulder and say, hey, um, I, I never would have known any of these things. So I learned that as I made mistakes and then was advised by people more experienced than I. So that's really the best thing we can do is um, just try and take any of these lessons and, and apply them and then pass them on to others. So we are now going to be soldering to the left and right trigger. So in both cases, we're gonna be soldering to the second contact in on both sides. So we've got uh, this guy right here. Now, it's probably best 
if you know what way your uh, wire is going to be laying to try and solder it in so it's actually going to be like pointing in the right direction. So since we know this wire is going to be coming up underneath, we are going to connect here so it lies in roughly the same way. So this is where we're glad we pretend. Because all we have to do is heat the contact and this sucker is gonna stick. And it's good. And the same for the other one. Second contact in. go. We have all three wires soldered in. Our two contacts left and right and then our select. So there are some specific instructions as to how to bend this thing and I'm going to do just a review for a couple of seconds and then we're going to, uh, to take a look at how that works. Okay, so I took the coward's way out and I did the folding off camera. So when you look at this, there are two specific connectors here. There is the 32 pin and the 40 pin. Now, when you're using the 32 pin, you actually have to fold this thing in a particular way to make sure that the, uh, the 40 pin is not gonna get in the way of the board and that the 32 pin can go where it needs to. So the best way to do that is probably to uh, to do like the online walkthroughs on handheld legend or retro modding sites for the funny playing. And what I did is I just compared what I had on screen here and just gently put in So now, when you actually take a look at it, if it's the 32 pin, this will be your view. You'll have the 40 pin actually folded in against itself. And it is apparently okay to bend this ribbon. <laughs> so they kind of expect this. So this is the view that you're looking for. Now the other thing that we're gonna do pretty quickly here is we might as well get this out of the way. We're actually gonna test this screen so connector on the very bottom of the screen connects like a glove to the connector on the end here and we need to put some power through this so probably the simplest way to do that is going to be setting it down in the shell and putting some batteries in Just, you know, be careful. <laughs> be gentle with the screen as you go. And let's just get a couple of double A's. <sighs> I'll go with ye old Costco brand. Just try to make sure that you're not putting any stress on any of the parts here. So here's a moment of truth. And that's what we're looking for right there. So we got sound and we got gorgeous picture. So we know that this screen works. That's just one of the first things they tell you to do is test this puppy out to make sure that you're not putting it in a bunch of work for no reason. 
and we've got our connections solid. So I'm going to put this puppy back up. Okay, so we can turn that off. Again, we're going to gently turn this over, remove the batteries, and then we're going to work on the other screen stuff that we need to be. So, we most likely don't need to have the back and the board together for a couple minutes. So now, one of the things that they're going to tell you is that you need to actually connect these two things together. Now, I'm actually going to disconnect the screen from the board gently again. This one was pretty stiff when I went to open this part up, so I'm just doing it in tiny increments because it was clear this one had never been taken apart before. When I removed the board, everything was pretty stiff. So if you're going to pull, pull uniformly. Don't angle it out. Okay. Now, one of the things that they're going to tell you is to make sure that you've got some double-sided tape. And we need to actually glue this thing down. So we're just going to use double-sided tape that isn't too hardcore, so no foam tape or anything like that. Um, and the other thing that we're going to want to do first is it comes with an insulating film, uh, which says specifically, attach this insulating film to the metal surface on the back of the screen. So we're going to do that thing before we go any further, because this is insulating, as in keeps anything from grounding out against the metal back of the screen. I actually, uh, strangely enough, these insulating films are almost like the toughest thing to get a hold of um, because they really only send out one per kit. <laughs> and uh, in the past when I've actually, you know, botched it and had to go back and try it again, I just used Captain Tape to line the back of the screen and that was fine. Uh, so if for some reason you need to again, don't feel too bad about that. Um, I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, good old scotch double-sided. I'm not going to get too crazy. You know what? I'll just put it on here. That's where it's going to go anyway. Just be careful with these screens, hey? Um, too much pressure and you will crack it. I've broken a few of these myself. When I was doing my first GBA upgrade and uh, and then also when I was doing my first Game Boy Color upgrade. So it's almost like somebody took a couple of hard lessons to learn. Make sure that it's generally flush with the angles of the screen as best as you can. Because when we go to put it in later, any overhanging and outcropping is gonna be problematic but you're restricted to essentially what the physics here are. So if this thing will only connect and have a little bit of overhang on the edges, then that's something we're gonna have to live with. So now we've kind of got the screen prepped. So I have uh, snagged a couple of other pieces here as well. Uh, now I'm gonna set this aside for the moment. Um, because that is not going to get any play for a few minutes. And now we are at one of, in the past, the most nerve-wracking spots for me. Because <laughs> um, I've broken a few of these screens. So we've got a few elements here. We've got 
the uh, pretty much ready to go screen that you've aligned as much as possible to try and keep anything from overhanging the edge, but it still does overhang just a little bit, and that's just part of the, the way it works, I guess. Um, and then we've still got some soldering contacts that we're gonna need to be able to use here shortly. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at how this all goes together because this is, once you get down to sticking this in place, this is kind of point of no return time. So this is double-sided foam tape. Uh, you can keep the center bit. Um, it's actually been useful for me in some other builds because it's kind of nice to be able to, you know, just put in to fill a gap in, in certain spots, that kind of stuff. But you can see the double-sided foam tape matches the dimensions of this guy. And once you actually stick the screen to that, there's no going back. The foam tape is there to keep dust and junk from getting in and to keep the screen from moving around. Um, and no matter how tight you think you might have it, without using it, you're going to end up with some, some bleed problems and some dust problems that you don't wanna to have to be going back to time and time again. So the key with this is we have to take our time. So what we're gonna do is we uh, peel this off gently. There we go, center part just comes right out. So yeah, hold on to that for other needs if you got it. And now this is uh, pretty sweet. This is like real injection molded plastic, so it fits. Um, I'll confess I fiddled with it a little bit earlier. It fits better in here than anything that I've seen before. So Handheld Legend has the best version of the spacer because um, there's other ones where you've just got like tiny little side sliver and a bottom sliver, and they're never perfect. Um, if they're 3D printed, they tend to have some awkward dimensions and you can just snap your screen by trying to force it in place with those spacers that are too big. So I fiddled with this one enough to know that it actually does work. Um, you just have to be gentle with it. But the problem is that once you lay it down in, it's actually sitting over top of the solder points. So they built this one with um, a safety mechanism. So you can actually just pop this piece off which we are going to. That felt bad as I was doing it, but it was what needed to happen. <laughs> so this thing is still going to work. Um, it's gonna hold the screen in place, but it's actually gonna leave our solder, our solder joints open there. Uh, solder pads, sorry, more accurately. So the next step is the clincher. We are going to Peel this off. We are going to carefully lay it in place. Feel free to use tweezers or any other things that could technically be a guide for you. Just make sure you center it to the one corner. Smooth it down gently. So that there's no awkward bunches or anything like that. Okay. So, gut check time. So we are going to be permanently setting the screen in place. And again, I cannot stress enough Take your time with this. 
I sat and looked at this thing for the last five minutes, just gathering up the nerve. So we're going to be peeling off, the, for the love of God, don't forget to take off the, the protector on the front screen. I have done that, wasn't fun. Um, the good news is that it comes off pretty easily um, because the protector is what's actually stuck to the uh, the foam tape here, but still, not, not good vibes. Okay, so it is sitting gently in place, and now we have to fit this thing. Now what I'd recommend, and that I just used myself, was a spudger, so I can gently apply some pressure. without breaking. So the bottom doesn't seem to be the issue. And we are just about flush on the edge. think by George we have got it just gently so that is probably the easiest time I've ever had with the spacers this thing is a marvel so to anyone who's listening buy the handheld legend one it is a great screen and it works and they are the first people to actually get this thing right because they're doing real injection molding. They were able to get the dimensions perfect because I've never seen spacers that actually worked right out of the gate before. This is the exact perfect dimensions. So fantastic, fantastic job guys. <laughs> Way to go on to legend. Um, okay, so I'm just a little giddy that that worked nicely. Um, like I said, it has been a while since I did this exact mod. So now we have a screen that is permanently and well in place. Now the first thing we're gonna do after this is apply some Captain Tape because we wanna make sure that this stuff does not short out in contact with anything else. So use it as liberally as you need and just cover up this whole area. I'm not gonna make you sit through this. Okay, so now we have this thing well and truly covered in Captain Tape. And we have some other work to do. So, now we can actually start kind of putting the whole deal together. So we have some highly satisfying buttons and pads that we can install. Uh, the client that I'm dealing with uh, said he really wanted a red and black theme. So once we saw this um, prestige shell from Retro6, what up guys? Retro6 makes awesome stuff. They are often partnered with Handheld Legend. That's the reason why I was able to get all this stuff from Handheld Legend's site specifically. So we are going to uh, be putting together some cool stuff here. So these, I think they called them blood crystal, was the color. They look gorgeous. Um, so I saw some other ones that were red and they looked more like orangey. So these will do for underneath the surface to, to stick in with the overall theme. Um, but these ones are what you're gonna see on the outside. So it's gonna be like the dark shell and blood crystal, which is pretty awesome. So. B button. 
Now, my big ham fingers often have trouble with this. So there is no shame in using tweezers when you need to. I often do this, you're gonna see me do it with the screws later as well. Um, the nice thing is that, you know, this doesn't come with its own set of screws. You can get them from the website, but just nothing really can replace uh, a fantastic, uh, that's not even gonna focus, a good tri-wing. <laughs> so, we are putting together buttons. And Blood Crystal Highlights, again, how cool is that name? Anybody who's done this before, I'm going to assume that you have actually installed buttons at least. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time focusing on that. One of the nice things about having these uh, pre machined shells is that you don't really have to worry about whether or not your alterations are gonna be the thing that actually breaks this or keeps it from working properly. So they actually take all the, uh, the work out of that for you and make sure that that screen will fit and it will fit nicely. So can confirm. Pads and buttons fit nicely. Now, honestly, this is just me. So, if any of you are actually watching this and going, I've done this before, the way he's doing this in order is really dumb. Yeah, I may be getting ahead of myself occasionally, but uh, I really do like to, to see how it's all going to fit together and be able to. Uh, See if there's any fitment issues early. Doesn't mean I'm gonna leave all these things in place right now, but that does look pretty great. So yeah, those buttons are gonna do their job. So, now it brings us to our final steps. So we're going to be actually soldering to these pads. Now, um, anybody who is talking about this will tell you the, the left, right, and the select, those are the things that matter. The ground one, you can just ignore. I'm sure that has a real use. I have not done a lot of research on it because it was never really relevant to my, to my uses as well. But we are going to be soldering these to their proper spots. Okay, so I've had my soldering iron at the ready still for the last little bit. We are going to, before I get too crazy, we're still going to actually put a dab of solder on each of these contact pads. Just freshen up the tip of the soldering iron. And once again, double check your heat is not out of control. I keep mine at a steady 250 degrees. And we only need to do the these three contacts. So again, it's kind of precision. We heat the contact and then we bring the solder in to meet it. There's one. There's two. There's three. So we have three nice little bubbles, exactly where they're supposed to be. No bridging between them. You got to keep those contacts apart. And that's ugh, one of the best jobs I've done on that so far. So yay for experience. Um, that is exactly what we wanted out of this. So yay me for doing it awesome on video. Um, the next thing we're going to do 
is we're going to bring this in on the board and first we're going to do the select contact. Go. that's one and then we are going to do the second one down which is right so make sure you're doing the right one so this is our right side if the buttons diagonal and that are facing us so we're going to bring this one Bring up our final left. I just turn this around a little bit. It's an awkward angle, and you don't really want to be at an awkward angle when you're soldering. Okay, we have three successfully soldered contacts on the board. And now we're in business. So, what's gonna happen next? We are going to sideways and see if this makes sense. Yep, so that connection is holding nicely. Now, I think I spotted something that doesn't make sense. <laughs> How are we going to get this in? Right? So these guys are going to have to actually go down underneath here. So I'm not gonna say I did that on purpose, um, but the good news is that it's, it's fairly simple to uh, quickly detach, and we need to actually bring these two wires up underneath. So we'll have to desolder, bring them up through, and then uh, and do it again. Just the slightest bit of heat. I would knowingly say rookie mistake, but I am clearly a rookie, so it would be redundant. So let's get the wires positioned the way we need, and then we do this again. We got our right. Okay. So again, let's think about it twisted. So this guy's gonna be our right side, this is gonna be our left side. And this is how it's going to sit down when it goes in. So let's do this the correct way this time. In fact, I'm just going to pull this out so we don't mix them up because I know what I'm capable of. Okay, so let's just redo that. Again, not a lot of heat. Not a lot of extra time needed for the contact. Um, might as well use the tweezers if I can. OK. 
Okay. I'll take a second and feed the other one through. decide what we want the best angle to be. That should still be fine. So, we have our three corrected connections. So, when we're actually stringing these through, you wanna make sure, the nice thing with these ones, since they do kinda of hold the shape. Now, we're actually gonna do one more little thing before we start doing final fitting. we can actually make use of this. This is handy because not only is it a, a dust proofing mechanism, but it gives a little bit of tautness to the, uh, the mechanisms. A little bit of snugness that might not otherwise be. As we go to fit in go. Hear that telltale click. Now, the cord management, that will be a matter of prudence again. You want to actually have it going through. There's some space here. You don't want the cords to get actually, or the wires to get it. crunched when you actually put the case in place. So maybe a little bit of captain tape might not go amiss there either, just to have it as a guide. I swear I'm gonna edit this thing down later. down and we're gonna do the same over on the other side you don't have to use a lot because that's some pretty thin wire and you also don't want to have it over top of actual screw holes and screw posts. Maybe just a little bit. There we go should be enough of a guy to kind of keep it generally in place. I'm just gonna want it tight.
that is what I'm talking about. Just don't want any excess wires sticking out and rearing their ugly heads later. And they are perfectly fine, compacted in there with the foam. Okay, so now is when we are going to put a couple of our screws back in place finally. harder because this is the first time I'm threading screws into this new shell. So I really don't want to like crack it or anything like that. Magnetized or you're not. Jeez. There we go. So that has got to be nice and snug out cracking the shell now it's funny GBAs generally only come with the two screws, one here and one here, but there's actually a third spot in there um, that usually could help with all of this tightening business if it wanted to. But for some reason, whenever I open one of these suckers up, that third screw is just never there. Sometime I'll have the, uh, the chance to ask somebody about that. <laughs> Okay, so we had a chance to thread those. Now we're gonna pop them out, and we're gonna catch something I missed. Yeah, just make sure you. I am of a split mind on this because uh, I've watched some of Mako's videos and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't edit a dang thing. Uh, like he'll pause for a couple seconds and come back, but he does not edit out his mistakes. And there is a purity to that because what we're talking about is is it more useful to people to speed it up and just let them see the right way instead of letting them experience your mistakes every painful second of it. <laughs> so, um, there we go. So this is what we're looking at. Okay, so most of the work is still in place. I'm going to slide these wires back underneath. And again, the whole point of the, this manic wire management is so the wires don't get crimped when we actually screw everything down, because that would be bad. It has happened to me before. Uh, I had to take everything apart and 
pretty much redo the entire deal because uh, I wasn't really sure what was going on because I was getting a weird connection. Okay, much easier screwing them down in the second time now that those that ground has been trod before. Always makes me nervous when I'm doing this with a shell for the first time because you always need to break ground on these threads. And if it is not a good shell, it could just crack and leave you back at square one, having to wait for a new shell to come. There we go. Looking kind of like we need it to be. Now we're going to be pretty gentle with this part here. So we need to get the 32 pin down in here, not at any weird angles, and get it as close to flush as we can. And that was pretty much perfect first try. Okay, good. And then whenever you try and actually push these down, there's a little bit of resistance that tries to push it up on the other side. So just keep going until both sides are down flush and you've got a solid connection. So now we can go through and start putting in buttons because it makes sense to do so. It was nice to see the fitment earlier, but this is when most normal people would actually go through and do that part. Okay, I'm just gonna do a quick look over everything, make sure I haven't missed any random pieces that might jump out at me. Well, this is looking kinda like I planned. This is fitting together nicely. I need to put the power button in now. Switch, switch. And the handy off position. Ah, and there it is. Just knocked one of the, uh, the triggers out of place. These are in fairly tight and spring loaded, so it's not a big surprise when one of them pops out or doesn't want to sit in place for you on the first try through.
that sticker. And we've got a couple more steps now. Um, one thing you want to make sure is that you don't have any random dust and stuff kicking around in here. Um, and also that you don't have anything misplaced. So that screen is not looking super straight to me. So it makes me wonder if the adhesive pulled away a bit. Let's check it out. Kind of looking okay. Just gonna pop that one back out for a second. Now we're gonna use a microfiber cloth to get off any potential fingerprints. And then we're gonna blow that one out a bit. Make sure no dust is trapped underneath there. That's sort of the whole point. Now I'm not going to take off the adhesive. I'm actually just going to leave that as is for the moment and fit it in. And then we're going to try our next couple of steps. So we are going to put in a fully charged handheld legend clean juice GBA pack. Um, this is one in the uh, original style that is blue and has had the uh, the low battery light indicator um, compatibility soldered into place. Now it's key with these ones, put them in the right way, like put them in, in contact with the contacts for the battery first on the downside and then push them down in. And that usually ensures a flush contact. Now this one uh, had a hole that wasn't quite centered properly for the, uh, for the clean juice. So I made some brief small modifications earlier to make sure that it fit the USB-C hole properly. There you go, let's see if there's anything else that Kind of sticks out here. So it looks like I've still got a little bit of tightening to do on a couple of these sides. Just wow screws. Still not giving it up. should be it. <laughs> Serve me right. Those ones should be good. So volume is clear. some reason that one is still not flush. And now we look look like we're good. Those are the last two that just needed a little bit of extra tightening. 
Now, honestly, if I hadn't done all the rest of these in the order that I did and straightened them as I was going along or tightened them just a little bit at a time, we could have had catastrophe. But just going through and tightening each of them a little bit at a time when you're going through to try and get some, some unthreaded screw posts sorted out, you do not want to go fast. Trust me on that one. something trapped underneath the screen <laughs> because why not okay I still haven't taken off the adhesive and stuck this thing down permanently yet because I want to see what we're gonna get so we are going to take just a uh, any old flash cart flash cart will do. I'm going to put in the EverDrive. Oh, there we go. Music to my ears. That is looking nice. Man, that's a nice build. In daylight, that blood crystal is going to just light up. That's nice. Okay, I'm going to try it with the, uh, the Easy Flash as well, and uh, we're going to check that out. Okay, I, I didn't go and grab my Easy Flash Omega because uh, I currently misplaced it. But this system, um, like the board that came with, uh, someone actually gave us a game along with it. Uh, it's like a random Yu-Gi-Oh one, I have no idea what that is. But it will be plenty fine. Um, it's going along to the client anyways because it was a toss-in. And we'll be able to use that to test our system. Oh, there it is. Sound works fine. I already tested the headphone jack when it was still part of the other one to make sure that headphones were working. Oh, someone still has a continue, apparently. But there we are. So I think that I can actually take off the adhesive and attach this, though I'm going to leave the, the front one on so the, the client has the experience of peeling that off for the first time himself. I'll probably just leave the Yu-Gi-Oh game in there, too, just because yeah, it's his anyways. So, to gently pry this one up. Since there is no adhesive underneath, should be no resistance. There we go. So we get one last spray, get anything off of the back side of this one. I've made sure that I did not put any fingerprints on the back side of this thing, but still want to just make sure it's, it's good and blemish free. peel and apply and this uh, glass protector goes to its forever home just because, uh, like I said, something for the client to peel off for himself and, and discover on his, his new system. So, that is it. We have, uh, with a few wrinkles, <laughs> because I have got a short memory, um, put together a GBA from beginning to end with the uh, unbranded IPS kit from Handheld Legend. Uh, the funny playing kit is also great. Um, 
honestly, it was like a $5 price difference between the two, and I've tried both, and uh, it was from a reputable source, so with the unbranded one. But either way, um, this is going to be a great system for this, uh, this person to be able to uh, explore uh, some stuff that he hasn't explored before in terms of uh, Game Boy Advance. Thanks again for, uh, for joining me, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, or just, hey, you're an idiot, you could have done that easier, uh, leave it in the comments, I can handle it. Um, and uh, if you like what you see, subscribe, and uh, I'll be able to uh, keep putting out more videos because I'm already doing it on the cheap. So, thanks a lot for coming along on the, uh, the journey so far with me, um, all 100 subscribers of you, and hopefully a few new, new faces coming up soon. And uh, we'll see you on the next time.